Okay, let's talk about GRE mathematics. So I'm assuming that uh, you're watching this video because you're interested in the GRE. Uh, maybe you're considering going to graduate school or you're definitely going and you have to take the GRE. So um, for those of you who are going to be going to graduate school, you're either taking a GRE or GMAT. And the GMAT is pretty much reserved for those folks who um, going into business school, maybe trying to get their MBA, etc. But the GRE is going to be for everyone else. And it's you know, both of these tests are essentially like the SAT uh, or ACT of um, graduate school, right? They're entry exams and they're important and they're challenging, okay? Especially if you're looking to get into a great school. So math is a big component of these exams. So even if you did well in math in high school or, you know, obviously, um, maybe you're a senior in college or maybe you've been out of college for many years even if you did well in mathematics you need to review there's a lot of math you know you want to <laughs> go over before you go into this uh, test if you're, you're looking to do, to do well in the math section so my background is I'm a middle um, middle and high school and, and I taught college mathematics so I have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree uh, so I definitely know all about uh, the GRE, etc. So been there, done that. And purpose of this video is just to kind of get you to start, you know, gauging. We're going to go over this one particular practice problem, but give you some um, tips on how to approach studying for the GRE. Now, I do offer, if you find that you like my teaching style, I have a uh, specific GRE math test prep uh, course. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. Extremely comprehensive, lots and lots of material. Um, so you can check that out if you want, but let's get into this practice problem. So this is definitely something that you should be able to do um, at the, you know, in terms of what you need to know, the mathematics uh, level you need to kind of be comfortable with for the GRE. I would classify this actually as a very easy problem. So if you want to give the video a pause and give you know give it a try, we'll go over it. Now I'm not going to teach all about this type. Uh, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem. But I'm not going to get into all the different things that uh, the you know the full characteristics of what this is because we can you know this can turn into a complete lesson uh, or so. So let's go ahead and get to it okay so hopefully you got some sort of answer x is equal to whatever and if you um, don't no worries okay so the first thing is this this is what we call a rational equation so it's an equation all right and it's rational just a little tip when you hear that word rational in mathematics you want to think of fraction okay so a rational number is something like two thirds. A rational expression is like x over three, and this would be considered a rational uh, equation. Now there are some other technical things that define these stuff, but I don't want to get into that because that's not going to be so useful. But when you think of when you hear the word rational, okay, think of the concept of fractions. Now here we have an equation, okay. And we have some fractions uh, going on here. And the fractions have variables. These will, uh, so again, this is a rational uh, equation. Now, when you're solving equations and there's fractions going on, you want to look for this situation. You want to see if your equation is one fraction equal to one other fraction. So in this case, I have one fraction or one rational expression. Uh, and it's equal to one other fraction. Okay, now the reason why you want to look for that is because this is a proportion in mathematics and they're very easy to solve. Okay, there's a very direct approach to solve them. Okay, so I, if I wanted to be like, you know, not, you know, uh, nice in this video, I could say solve something like this. All right, so now we have another term over here. We have, you know, uh, we have rational expressions in the equation, but now this is no longer a uh, proportion. Now I kind of could turn it into a proportion but with some work, but then it's going to get more complex. And it's not a proportion because it's not one fraction equal to another fraction. I got this other stuff over here. All right. So you want to be able to look out for proportions. Now let's take a look at a simple proportion. Let's say I have one fourth is equal to 
x over um, 10. So to solve a proportion, this is one fraction equal to another fraction, we use the cross product. Okay, we, we multiply across okay, these diagonals, the cross product, product meaning multiplication and, and cross meaning diagonal. So this is going to be 1 times 10 is equal to 10 and 4 times x is equal to 4x and then we just solve for x, right? So we have x is equal to 10 over 4. So that's how we solve this proportion. So we can use this, the same concept here and let's get right to it. So if you understand that, maybe you want to go ahead and try to solve um, uh, the problem from this point forward. Alright, so we're going to go 4 times x and then this is going to be x minus 1 times 2. Alright, so this is going to be 4x is equal to 2 times x minus 1. So now we've cleared the um, fractions here. Now I have a, a basic linear equation. Now let me go ahead and just back up here for a second. What if this problem was written this manner? Okay. Now the reason why I'm going to emphasize what I'm going to uh, tell you here, let's go ahead and do this again. I would do the same thing, right? This would be 4 times x, no problem. But here's where students make a lot of mistakes, okay? I want to show you some pitfalls. They'll go like, okay, this is 2 times x minus 1, and they'll go, oh, that's 2 times x minus 1. They'll write it that way. They get really confused. Remember, in algebra, when you see a an, um, an algebraic term, something being added or subtracted, you always want to uh, mentally put parentheses around it. It's actually a good idea just to actually put parentheses or grouping symbols because it will keep you from making mistakes on these problems. So let's go ahead and look at the cross product again. So it's going to be 2 times x minus 1 over 4 times x. So let's go ahead and finish this up. So this would be 4x is equal to 2 times x minus 1. So now I just go ahead and just do the distributive property, right? So this would be 4x is equal to 2 times x, 2x, 2. I'm going to distribute this 2 here, right? So this is going to be minus 2. If you're struggling with this basic stuff or you're kind of a little bit weak on this, that's a good indication that you have a good amount to review. Don't, uh, you know, get stressed out about it. You just have your work cut out for you. All right, so here I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides of the equation and I have 2x is equal to negative 2 so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation out by 2 and I have x is equal to negative 1 okay so this would be my answer and when you have an equation like this it's always good to check so here's the work I'm going to erase that you can pause the video and see the work if you like but let's go ahead and just check and verify that this is correct. So if x is equal to negative 1, I could plug in a negative 1 right there and negative 1 there, and it should balance. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's going to be 4 over, okay, so instead of x minus 1, it's going to be negative 1. Let me write that a little better. Negative 1 minus 1, and that should be equal to 2 over negative 1. So I just replaced the x's with the negative 1. So I'm checking the solution here. So what's 4 over 1 minus 1? So that's going to be 4 over negative 2, right? So 2 divided by negative 1 is going to be negative 2. So what's 4 divided by negative 2? Well, that's also going to be negative 2. So negative 2, in fact, is equal to negative 2. So that checks out. So because our solution, when I plugged it back into the equation, it balanced the equation, that solution balanced the equation. That's how you check a solution to, see, to, to uh, see if it's correct. If in fact that solution, when you plug it back into the equation and the left hand side equals the right hand side, then it's a good solution. Okay, so just a real basic uh, uh, practice problem. And I, yeah, again, on a level, a scale of difficulty, you know, one being super basic, you know, for the GRE, and ten being advanced. Oh, I would say this this problem was something like a three or a four. Okay, there's a lot more stuff <laughs> uh, that you're going to need to know for the GRE. So, you know, if you knock this out of the ballpark, you got the right answer, and you kind of reason through it. You know, that's good. But if you didn't really know what you were doing, then you know, 
you can make this this problem can be I can make it much more comp, uh, complex you know but uh, you got to start someplace and let's go ahead and just wrap this video up I don't want to make it too long I do thank you for your time uh, so far but uh, listen if you're starting for the GRE math you need to uh, you need to respect the amount of math you you're going to know okay I need to know for the exam and the worst mistake you can make is to say, oh, I did well in, in math in college. I did well in math in high school. You still need to review. Okay. So get yourself a good book. Uh, if you really you want to go through a full comprehensive course, I'll leave the uh, link to my course in the description of this video. Extremely comprehensive. Also, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel that will uh, serve you very well for the GRE. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, definitely would appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Let me know how I'm doing or maybe you have some other uh, questions that I can help you with. Uh, and these are the things that, you know, uh, make me better and also gives me ideas for future videos. But with that being said, I certainly wish you all the best on the GRE. I know one thing. I'll just leave you with this. Even if you're a terrible at math or you struggle with math, you, you have to shift your mindset. Okay. You can be, you could do outstanding on the math section here. It's just a matter of how much effort you want to put in. Number one and number two, what are what's your study plan? Okay, it's always best to learn from a master teacher. Okay, I consider myself an expert teacher. Why? Because that's my profession. That's what I've been doing for many many years. I mean, you're an expert at you know whatever you do. I'm an expert at this. Okay, because I've been doing it for such a long time, uh, and I'm telling you, you can you can do. Uh, great, but you want to, you know, you want to study from a great program as well. But I wish you all the best on GRE. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.